This conference will now be recorded. Okay, uh, so we'll be starting our next topic uh, that is uh, invoice verification part two. Okay, so the topics that we are going to cover there, we will see how to enter or change tax information in an, in an invoice. Enter or change cash discount in information in the invoice. Posting of gross or net of cash discount. Okay, enter invoice in foreign currency. Okay. Enter invoice for PO with account assignment group. Okay, and enter invoices relating to a blanket purchase order. Okay, so first we'll start with the applying the taxes. So normally in the organizations in the country, you have the tax authorities. So any company uh, has to pay the tax. So when you when you are purchasing a material, when you have a purchasing material from a supplier, you will have the input tax. Input tax. And when the organization is selling the products to the customer, they have the output tax. And normally it is called as VAT, value added tax. So this input tax, how to handle in the invoice, we'll be discussing now. Okay. So normally most of the invoices, invoices received by your company are taxable. It is your job to check whether the tax data is correct. Okay. You enter the tax rates and tax amounts specified in the invoice in the header screen area when you enter the invoice. Okay. So normally in the in the invoice screen, you have a tax code. So that tax code you will enter. And accordingly, you will uh, um, finally the uh, proposed tax amount in the in the mirror screen. Okay, so if you see here, this is the one in the basic data tab in the Miro, in the Miro transaction, you have a tax code. So this will come from configuration. I will show you this in a minute. And using that, you will calculate the tax amount. Okay, so when you do this, when, when this tax code is proposed by the system, system automatically inherits this tax code to the line items, all the line items in the in the invoice okay so we will see now this in the system so let's go to the system okay let me log in again okay so suppose if i go to miro transaction okay let's say that my company code is thousand Okay, suppose if you see here, the moment I go to the invoice transaction, system is proposing by default a tax code, input tax of 10%. You see here, system is proposing by default. Of course, you can change it here. You can change it here, but system proposes always a default tax code. Okay, so this tax code comes from the configuration. Okay, so if you go to configuration, I'll show you the first configuration. Go to SPRO. SAP reference IMG. Okay. Go to materials management. Go to materials management. Okay. Go to logistics invoice verification. Okay. Go to incoming invoice. Okay. Here you see maintain default values for tax codes. If you go there. What is a company code here we are using we are using thousand so if you select thousand company code this is a company code if you go to details you see this is the input tax 10 percent one i so as as this is maintained for thousand company code when we are going to the mirror screen again if i go to mirror screen again okay see here it is proposing one i as a default one okay so that is the um, that's how it gets defaulted. Okay, so now we will see, we will create a PO, okay. and then accordingly we will see the. Uh, thing. Okay, do we have any template? Just one minute. Okay, and let's create a new one. Okay. 
okay i am creating a fresh po i am creating a fresh po okay so let me save the po with two line items okay so now you have the po so let's take the po okay so normally if you go to po if you go to po ma23n this is the po we just created now if you observe carefully in the item details for each item in the invoice tab there is a tax code okay if you maintain this tax code this will get defaulted in the mirror at item level okay suppose for 10 caramel color we don't have any tax code suppose if i go to the next next item 20 here also it is not having any tax code suppose if the tax codes are maintained in the purchase order this will get defaulted to the mirror screen at item level at item level as we are not maintaining anything here okay let's take the PO. let me do the gr i'll do the goods receipt this is a PO. now let's do the gr you go goods receipt okay goods receipt purchase order enter the purchase order number okay we have two line items we don't have here that's okay story location is there check that's okay which one enter the date of production check okay everything is okay okay now i am posting it okay so we i posted it okay so gr is done so now Now let's do the mirror. So when we go to the mirror, okay. So now here you see at the header level, this is the tax code. Okay. So now if I start doing the mirror, I enter the purchase order. So this is the purchase order. I will enter the purchase order. you see so when you enter the purchase order and the item the the tax code at the header level will get inherited to the items so if you scroll to right if you scroll to right let's select here all information so if you scroll to right if you scroll to right you see here tax code in the PO there is no tax code at item level so but here the tax code is coming for the item so this tax code from the header is inherited to the line items okay but after this once it is inherited to the items if you change it header level suppose let's say if this I am making it making it 19 percent if I change it okay if I enter but it will not change at item level see at item level still it is i one i only so after once it is inherited to the line items if you change it header level it will not get changed at item level here you have to change it manually manually only okay so that is the that's how the item codes are handled so if they are maintained in po those are inherited to the line items in the mirror otherwise it will take it from the header level so now here again after inheritance if you change it header level you can change it here also. you have to change it here man you have to change it here man 